first thing we need to have is root access and the CWM application, the Clockwork Mode application. These both steps can be done in only one by following a simple tutorial which I will leave the link below. After you see the tutorial, you will notice that there will be two more applications installed which are the root user application and the CWM application which is the abbrevi abbreviation of Clockwork Mode. There are two ways uh, by which we can enter the Clockwork Mode. The first one is from the application and the second one is in the recovery mode. The application you will see in the application menu it looks like this and what we need to do is just tap it to ask root user and it says recovery mode right there and we just tap it and it will ask us to reboot into Clover mode recovery now and if we press reboot we will enter. The other way, the most manual way, we can say, it, is by powering off the device and once it's completely shut down we will have to press and hold simultaneously the volume up button, the home button and the power button. We do it like this, we hold it for a few seconds and we will see that we are in the CWM which is in recovery mode. As we can see we have many options here. It says reboot system now, install C from SD card, wipe data factory reset, wipe cache partition, backup and restore, mount and storage and advanced. The first thing we need to, to know is that the most drastic process of this all is the wipe data factory reset but we need no to fear because this we will only reset the device to the factory state of the ROM which we have installed. What this means is that the, if the initial ROM that we have installed is the original one, the phone will be left as when we bought it, like from the factory. But if we have installed other ROM, let's say for example CyanogenMod 9, it will start the phone in Cyanogen 9. This is the most drastic process because it will erase some data which may result important for you, so it's recommended to perform a safety backup before doing this. I must say I've never lost any photos or documents in this process, but the application data will be erased such as, for example, save games or other stuff. This also depends on the phone and the success of the, of the process. What we are going to do is select this with the power button and with the help of the volume up and volume down buttons we are going to select yes, delete all device user data. As we can see it says this cannot be undone so that's why it's recommended to perform a backup before. We select it and we'll see that uh, process bar and that's it, quite fast. The next process is the wipe cache partition. This one, as you may know, uh, the most frequently used system files are stored in a special area in your flash storage so the phone can access them quickly. This area is called cache it's well known for most Android users. So to wipe cache partition means to wipe the most commonly files from the cache. These files won't be deleted from your phone in general so it's safe to wipe the cache partition. You can go ahead and do that without worrying. This is not as drastic as the wipe data factory reset. So the process is the same. We select it 
with the power button and we with the volume down we select web catching. This is a uh, also very fast process. Normally the process which lasts longer is the wipe data factory reset. And the last one is the wipe valvic cache. This one we will have to access in the advanced section. We scroll with the volume down, we select with the power button and the first option, the second one, because the first one is reboot system, reboot recovery, we select it and there we have to wipe down the cache. This is the less drastic of the process and let me say that the Dalvik cache is a virtual space in the phone's memory which uses the Havas virtual machine on Android to execute the applications. The amount of space used increases over time and can be replaced, much less can be recovered. So we will need many times to clean the system to keep the device's performance optimized. It's nothing drastic at all. As we can see, if we reboot the system right now, it will start normally and no harm will be done to your phone. This uh, is very useful, especially when we install uh, another custom ROM such as CyanogenMod or MIUI. As we can see, we can reboot the Galaxy S3 and no harm will be done to our smartphone. Software. This we do because many people are scared of harming their phone, but nothing happens. It's just some process. It may take longer because once you perform a wipe data factory reset, the phone starts like for the first time, so it may take some more time to start, but it will start. As we can see, the Samsung Galaxy started correctly and of course it will ask to set it with our language or Wi-Fi settings and everything you need to do when you uh, start the phone for the first time. But as you can see, no harm was done to the Samsung Galaxy S3. So, this guys was how to perform a wipe data factory reset